Colonel Clarence E. Bud Anderson. Bud flew P-51 Mustangs in World War II. He had 16 and a quarter combat victories, earning him the status of triple ace. Due to his vast experience and leadership, Bud was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame and the International Air and Space Hall of Fame. He is also a recipient of the Congressional Gold Medal for his actions in World War II. Today we have the honor of speaking with Bud and looking into the life of a triple ace through a meta leadership lens. Of course, World War II was a was a big deal. Um, the whole country, you know, was involved. Um, you either were in the service or you were in industry working on war, you know, making war materials. Well, my story is more about flying. I wanted to fly. It just became a passion with me. And, uh, as a young man, very young man, young person, working at the uh, uh, Sacramento Air Depot, like foreman came around and gathered us all around there and says, hey, you, 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 Bud, Bud Anderson, uh, go, on on, go on home and come back at the midnight shift again. The Japs just attacked us at Pearl Harbor. I was still 19 years old, but the next month I'm going to be 20. On my birthday, I went right there to the recruiting office on uh, on the base, and a few days I raised my right hand, and then a few days later I was gone. I was on my way for this first time fighter group, and so we're going to be on the ground floor, and I'll be a leader in combat. It was a concentration, of course, was on flying. It wasn't, it wasn't about being an officer or a leader. Now I have to learn how to train my guys that I'm going to fly combat with. You know, I got to be. They got to. I got to teach them right, and and. Uh, and so, because they're going to fly with you, you got to trust them. Learning these uh, leadership <laughs> traits, by do it yourself. <laughs> you might say, if I found that if I could be a good pilot myself and a good leader, flying with them, teaching them. Uh, drinking with them, living with them. Uh, we knew each other and uh, knew who to trust and not trust. Wow, Bud, thanks for sharing with us uh, who you were when you were such a young aviator. Uh, maybe you could tell us a time that you faced a challenging situation, maybe, maybe a dogfight or in combat. Fighter pilots and dogfighting is uh, was the big thing, and so you had to be good at dogfighting, getting on the other guy's tail, so to speak. And um, I was good at that, and so the guys, my flight, respected me, you know, and, and trusted me. And I taught him how to fly like I wanted to fly. Jimmy Doolittle, to me, was my hero. Bomber pilots hated his guts. They, <laughs> they considered him a murderer. <laughs> and the fighter pilots thought he was Jesus Christ. We were so happy about it. <laughs> we got turned loose. This particular fight, two four-ship flights, and I was in the last one. But we were ready for combat. It was pretty. It was pretty far down in Germany. Just as we made that last turn, I thought, you know, I'm tailing Charlie here <laughs> with my flight. I'm the last flight. I better take a look around. Bogies, unidentified airplanes, coming down at us at five o'clock. 
they are attacking us. There's no doubt in my mind about it. So I reverse my turn. The tail, the, the, the fourth guy in their formation starts to climb and the rest of them go straight ahead. So uh, I'm chasing the three and I don't want this guy to get up here where he can come down on us. So I sent my number three and four man in my fly. He says, you guys go after him. And I'll when the two of us will chase the three. So Eddie Simpson took his wingman and went after this guy and shot him down. So we took care of that guy. Now it's uh, two against three. So I simply drive up behind this guy and give him a long burst. So now it's uh, two against two. And he's definitely behind us now and chasing us. Then I see him go, all of a sudden he goes, ooh, like this. I say, uh oh, he's chasing my wingman who's closer to him. And I didn't know how, you know, so I told my wingman, I said, hey, he's going after you. You take evasive action and I'll stay on your tail. I'll cover you. So he broke it off and started rolling and, you know, doing, doing evasive maneuvers. And sure enough, he, he goes off, the wingman goes off, and the German gets on his tail. And, that, and they're diving away f fast as they could go. And I'm now behind the German. I drop on his tail. So I, I keep my wingman informed so he doesn't think I'm using them as bait, you know. <laughs> Thinking he can out-zoom me. I thought I'd just proven it to him that I had the better airplane, but he didn't have much choice. And uh, so he's going up like that, and I pull up here, get a gun sight picture on him, and fire a little burst. I saw a single tracer go off his right wing. So I gave it, whoop, give it a little left rudder give him another burst, pow, I hit him all over the center of the airplane. Wow, that's incredible. How do you think your actions inspired those around you, bud? Good fighter pilots all wanted to be aces. That was your next badge, you know. But uh, everybody wanted, everybody wanted to get kill somebody in, in, in a dogfight. <laughs> and the, the other guys looked up to, uh, to the aces, I think. You treat people like you want to be treated. Uh, you want to get people, it's good to get people competitive in nature. You know what I mean? And, uh, and you take care of your people. You get good NCOs, treat them like your own. If they get in trouble, you go get them. Get them out of trouble. You had to lead the way. You know, you gotta, you gotta end. You got, you don't want to ask be able, ask them to do anything you wouldn't do, or couldn't do. Um. That's my philosophy on that. A wing commander needs to be able to do what, what, the, what the pilots are doing. <laughs> well, bud, any uh, last words for the airmen at Squadron Officer School? Well, Squadron Officer School is where you start, and uh, the schools are very valuable tools, and you... You make a lot of good contacts with people too. Um, that'll help you later on, later on in your career.